So to execute SQL queries on database, we have one more step here to execute SQL statements. To execute SQL statements, step four. Execute. SQL statements. How to execute SQL statements? Using this statement, we have three approaches right here. One is statement, one is prepared statement, and one is callable statement. So, using statement, if you want to execute this SQL queries, using this statement, first step, using statement using statement if you want to execute this SQL queries what you should do statement dot execute method here we need to pass DDL there is one more method statement dot execute update method here we need to pass DML and there is one more method statement dot execute query here we need to pass DRL okay there are three ways to execute DDL statements execute method to execute DML statements execute update method and to execute DRL sorry to execute DRL we have execute query method so using this three approaches you can make database calls but the first one is useful for ddl the second one is useful for dml and the third one is useful for drl data retrievals we know right what is dml and drl ddl ddl means data definition language it will includes which operations create create a table alter table drop table truncate table rename table and coming to dml insert record update record delete record coming to drl these are data retrieval operations DRL statements are what select records okay <clears throat> and by using prepared statement if you want to do this job using prepared statement using prepared statement using prepared statement if you want to do this prepared statement to dot there also we have methods execute without having any input prepared statement dot execute update prepared statement dot execute query you don't require to pass any SQL statements here why while creating prepared statement itself it required to pass SQL statements here so once after creation of statement by using SQL, just you need to execute them. So here you don't to, no need to pass any statements. So it is for DML, it is for DRL, DDL, DML and it is for DRL. You need to use for DDL, it is for DML and it is for DRL operations. Where exactly we have to pass the DDL, DML queries while creating statement itself. While creating statement itself, here you need to pass your DDL or D D DML or DRLs. In case of statement, you no need to pass any SQL query squared. While executing your query, you need to pass SQL squared. But in case of prepared statement, while creating your prepared statement itself, you need to pass your SQL statement here. And just to execute that statement, you need to call these methods. Okay. And finally, callable statement. This callable statement is useful for executing procedures or functions.
using callable statement we can execute procedures and functions in database okay just these all are approaches one by one one by one i'll go through all these steps okay there you can understand okay this is the fourth step and we have one more step we have one more step here to retrieve the data there is one more class in case of step 5 up to here we are executing statements in case if you require data from database you need to get the data right so to get the data we have one more interface here result set we have one more interface result set how to read data from database using result set using result set we can read data from database so there is one result set interface there is one result set interface using this result set interface what we can do we can iterate data which is coming from database which is coming from database so database when it submits i mean when it send data to java application when you are make a call on database like if you pass select query if you pass any select query here it will send data it will send data to your jdbc JDBC will give the data in the form of result set. Your table row data, table data. In table, we can have multiple rows. So that multiple rows data, again, it will store into one result set array. In this array, it will keep this same table data here. Then that result set object, it will provide to us. So by using this result set, just you need to collect your table data here. Okay. So to read data, we have to use result set. And finally, one more thing you have to do here. Must we need to handle exceptions? While writing our JDBC code, JDBC will throw always compile time exceptions. Compile time exceptions are checked exceptions or unchecked exceptions. Checked means? Unchecked means? Runtime exceptions. So checking means while compiling your JVM, not JVM, compiler. Compiler will check whether that code it have any compile time exceptions or not. If it find any compile time exceptions, must it will force us to keep try catch block or else it will ask us to report exception, throws exceptions. So JDBC will throws JDBC statements. JDBC statements will throws. Compile time exceptions. So, must we need to handle them while writing your JDBC code? You need to surround that code between try catch and which exception it will throw us. SQL exceptions it will throw us. So your JDBC code you should write here. Okay. And you need to handle them by using SQL exception. Exception handling is also here mandatory in case of JDBC. So by using finally these five steps, 
you can make jdbc i mean by using jdbc you can access your database hmm? for this sql exceptions sql exceptions actually given by your son only okay son implemented and given this there is sql package in that sql package we have this exceptions